Chapter three, Joe. Joe had curly hair, but he didn't know how much hair he had. He couldn't count that high. In fact, he couldn't count at all. When all the other children went to recess, Mrs. Jules had told Joe to wait inside. Joe, she said, how much hair do you have? Joe shrugged his shoulders. A lot, he answered. But how much, Joe, asked Mrs. Jules. Enough to cover my head, Joe answered. Joe, you are going to have to learn how to count, said Mrs. Jules. But Mrs. Jules, I already know how to count, said Joe. Let me go to recess. First count to 10. Joe counted to 10. 6, 8, 12, 1, 5, 2, 7, 11, 3, 10. No, Joe, that is wrong, said Mrs. Jules. No, it isn't, said Joe. I counted until I got to 10. But you were wrong, said Mrs. Jules. I'll prove it to you. She put five pencils on his desk. How many pencils do we have here, Joe? Joe counted the pencils. Four, six, one, nine, five. There are five pencils, Mrs. Jules. That's wrong, said Mrs. Jules. How many pencils are there, Joe asked. Five, said Mrs. Jules. That's what I said, said Joe. May I go to recess now? No, said Mrs. Jules. You got the right answer, but you counted the wrong way. You were just lucky. She set eight potatoes on his desk. How many potatoes, Joe? Joe counted the potatoes. Seven, five, three, one, two, four, six, eight. There are eight potatoes, Mrs. Jules. No, there are eight, said Mrs. Jules. But that's what I said, said Joe. May I go to recess now? No, you got the right answer, but you counted the wrong way again. She put three books on his desk. Count the books, Joe. Joe counted the books. A thousand, a million, three. Three, Mrs. Jules. Correct, said Mrs. Jules. May I go to recess now, Joe asked. No, said Mrs. Jules. May I have a potato, asked Joe. No, listen to me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten said Mrs. Jules. Now you say it. <clears throat> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, said Joe. Very good, said Mrs. Jules. She put six erasers on his desk. Now count the erasers, Joe, just the way I showed you. Joe counted the erasers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There are ten, Mrs. Jules. No, said Mrs. Jules. Didn't I count right? asked Joe. Yes, you counted right, but you got the wrong answer, said Mrs. Jules. This doesn't make any sense, said Joe. When I count the wrong way, I get the right answer. And when I count right, I get the wrong answer. Mrs. Jules hit her head against the wall five times. How many times did it hit my head against the wall? she asked. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You hit your head ten against the wall ten times, said Joe. No, said Mrs. Jules. Four, six, one, nine, five. You hit your head five times, said Joe. Mrs. Jules shook her head no and said, yes, that is right. The bell rang and all the other children came back from recess. The fresh air had made them very excited and they were laughing and shouting. Oh, darn, said Joe. Now I missed recess. Hey, Joe, where were you? asked John. You missed a great game of kickball. I kicked a home run, said Todd. What was wrong with you, Joe? asked Joy. Nothing, said Joe. Mrs. Jules was just trying to teach me how to count. <clears throat> Joy laughed. You mean you don't know how to count? Counting is easy, said Mauricia. Now, now, said Mrs. Jules. What's easy for you may not be easy for Joe, and what's easy for Joe may not be easy for you. Nothing's easy for Joe, said Mauricia. He's stupid. I can beat you up, said Joe. Try it, said Mauricia. That will be enough of that, said Mrs. Jules. She wrote Mauricia's name on the blackboard under the word discipline. Joe put his head on his desk between the eight potatoes and six erasers. Don't feel bad, Joe, said Mrs. Jules. I just don't get it, said Joe. I'll never learn how to count. Sure you 
go, said Mrs. Jules. One day it will just come to you. You'll wake up in the morning and suddenly be able to count. Joe asked, if all I have to do is wake up, what am I going to school for? School just speeds things up, said Mrs. Jules. Without school, it might take another 70 years before you wake up and are able to count. By that time, I may have no hair left on top of my head to count, said Joe. Exactly, said Mrs. Jules. That is why you go to school. When Joe woke up the next day, he knew how to count. He had 55,006 hairs on his head. They were all curly. Chapter four, Sherry. Sherry had long eyelashes. She weighed only 49 pounds. She always wore a big red and blue overcoat with a hood. The overcoat weighed 35 pounds. The red part weighed 15 pounds and the blue part weighed 15 pounds and the hood weighed five pounds. Her eyelashes weighed a pound and a half. She sat next to the window in Mrs. Jewell's class. She spent a lot of time just staring out the window. Mrs. Jules didn't mind. Mrs. Jules said that a lot of people learn best when they stare out a window. Sherry often fell asleep in class. Mrs. Jules didn't mind that either. She said that a lot of people do their best learning when they are asleep. Sherry spent all of her time either looking out the window or sleeping. Mrs. Jules thought she was the best student in class. One afternoon, it was very hot. All of the windows were open, yet Sherry still wore her red and blue overcoat. The heat made her very tired. Mrs. Jules was teaching arithmetic. Sherry pulled the hood up over her face, buried herself in her coat, and went to sleep. Mrs. Jules, said Kathy, Sherry is asleep. That's good, said Mrs. Jules. She must be learning something. Mrs. Jules continued with the lesson. Sherry began to snore. Mrs. Jules, Sherry is snoring, said Kathy. Yes, I can hear her, said Mrs. Jules. She must be learning an awful lot today. I wish the rest of you could be like her. Sherry began to toss and turn. She flopped over on top of her desk. And then she rolled over on top of Kathy's desk. Then she rolled back the other way. Kathy screamed. Sherry rolled out the window. She was still sound asleep. As you know, Mrs. Jules' class was on the 30th story of Wayside School. So Sherry had a long way to go. After she had fallen 10 stories, Sherry woke up. She looked around. She was confused. She wasn't in Mrs. Jewell's class and she wasn't at home in bed. She couldn't figure out where she was. She yawned, pulled the hood back over her eyes and went back to sleep. By that time, she had fallen another 10 stories. The Wayside School had an exceptionally large playground. Lewis, the yard teacher, was way over on the other side of it when he happened to see Sherry fall out of the window. He ducked under the volleyball net, hurled past the kickball field, hopped over the hopscotch court, climbed through the monkey bars, sped across the grass, and caught Sherry just before she hit the ground. The people in Mrs. Jewell's class cheered. Sherry woke up in Lewis's arms. Darn it, Lewis, she said. What did you go and wake me up for? I'm sorry, Sherry, said Lewis. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Sherry repeated. Is that all you can say? I was having a wonderful dream until you woke me up. You're always bothering me, Lewis. I can't stand it. She laughed and hugged him around the neck. Lewis carried her back up 30 flights of stairs to Mrs. Jewell's room. That evening when Sherry went to bed, she was unable to fall asleep. She just wasn't tired. Chapter five, Todd. All of the children in Mrs. Jewell's class, except Todd, were talking and carrying on. Todd was thinking. Todd always thought before he spoke. When he got an idea, his eyes lit up. Todd finished thinking and began to speak. But before he said two words, Mrs. Jewell's called him. Todd, she said, you know better than to talk in class. You must learn to work quietly, like the, child like the other children. She wrote his name on the blackboard under the word discipline. Todd looked around in amazement. All the other children who had been talking and screaming and fighting only seconds earlier were quietly working in their workbooks. Todd scratched his head. <clears throat> A child was given three chances in Mrs. Jules' class. The first time he did something wrong, Mrs. Jules wrote his name on the blackboard under the word discipline. The second time he did something wrong, she put a check next to his name. And the third time he did something wrong, she circled his name. Todd reached into his desk and pulled out his workbook. He had only just started it when he felt someone tap him on the shoulder. 
It was Joy. What page are you on? Joy asked. Page four, Todd whispered. I'm on page 11, said Joy. Todd didn't say anything. He didn't want to get into trouble. He just went back to work. Five minutes later, Joy tapped him again. Todd, is, Todd ignored her, so Joy poked him in the back with her pencil. Todd pretended he didn't notice. Joy got up from her seat and sharpened her pencil. She came back and poked it in Todd's back. What page are you on, she asked. Page five, Todd answered. Boy, are you dumb, Joy, said Joy. I'm on page 29. It isn't a race, Todd whispered. Five minutes later, Joy pulled Todd's hair and didn't let go until he turned around. What page are you on, she demanded. Page six, Todd answered as quietly as he could. I'm on page 200, Joy shouted. Todd was very angry. Will you please let me do my work and stop bothering me? Mrs. Jules heard him. Todd, what did I say about talking in class? Todd scratched his head. Mrs. Jules put a check next to Todd's name on the blackboard under the word discipline. Todd really tried to be good. He knew that if he talked one more time, Mrs. Jules would circle his name. Then he'd have to go home early at 12 o'clock on the kindergarten bus, just as he had the day before and the day before that. In fact, there hadn't been a day since Mrs. Jules took over the class that she didn't send Todd home early. She said she did it for his own good. The other children went home at two o'clock. Todd wasn't really bad. He just always got caught. He really wanted to stay past 12 o'clock. He wanted to find out what the class did from 12 to two, but it didn't look as though that was going, he didn't, it didn't look as though this was going to be his day. It was only 1030 and he already had two strikes against him. He sealed his lips and went back to work. There was a knock on the door. Mrs. Jules opened it. Two men stepped in wearing masks and holding guns. Give us all your money, they demanded. All I have is a nickel, said Mrs. Jules. I have a dime, said Mauricia. I have 13 cents, said Leslie. I have four cents, said Damien. What kind of bank is this, asked one of the robbers. It's not a bank, it's a school, said Todd. Can't you read? No, said the robbers. Neither can I, said Todd. Do you mean we walked all the way up 30 flights of stairs for nothing, asked the robber. Don't you have anything valuable? Todd's eyes lit up. We sure do, he said. We have knowledge. He grabbed Joy's workbook and gave it to the robbers. Knowledge is much more valuable than money. Thanks, kid, said one of the robbers. Maybe I'll give up being a criminal and become a scientist, said the other. They left the room without hurting anybody. Now I don't have a workbook, complained Joy. Mrs. Jules gave her a new one. Joy had to start all the way back at the beginning. Hey, Joy, what page are you on? Asked Todd. Page one, Joy sighed. I'm on page eight, laughed Todd triumphantly. Mrs. Jules heard him. She circled his name. Todd had three strikes against him. At 12 o'clock, he left the room to go home early on the kindergarten bus. But this time when he left, he was like a star baseball player leaving the field. All the children stood up, clapped their hands, and whistled. Todd scratched his head. And we're going to stop there. We will read more on Thursday. Um.